Welcome to Complines International. We're joined today by Uwe Naumann, Professor of Computer Science at Aachen University. Uwe, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So what is a joint algorithmic differentiation and why is it a mystified concept? How much time we, do we have? <laughs> so it's uh, the, the tough question first. Um, long story short, I guess uh, algorithmic differentiation can be described as a set of techniques really uh, to transform a computer program which evaluates a mathematical function into one that computes derivatives of that function. And uh, there is uh, there is really three things to be noted, I guess. So number one, uh, what people traditionally have been doing in this area in order to compute such derivatives of computer programs is, is finite difference approximation, also known as bumping in finance, um, with the big disadvantage uh, actually twofold. Number one, uh, that it's only an approximation of a derivative, which can be essentially arbitrarily poor, especially in floating point arithmetic as well as the computational complexity of the computation of many sensitivities scales with the number of those sensitivities. Now having said that, big advantage of in particular the adjoint mode of algorithmic differentiation is that you can get a gradient of arbitrary size, meaning a number of derivatives with respect to a very large number of free parameters at a computational cost which is essentially uh, independent of, of the number of those uh, derivatives. And the third point, while uh, well, finite difference approximation essentially, at least conceptually, generalizes also to higher order, uh, the fact that you only get an approximation with each order, that approximation gets worse and worse. With algorithmic differentiation, you can essentially go up to arbitrary order in differentiation in a seamless fashion and get, um, well, sensitivities of arbitrary order. So that's, that's, I guess, in a nutshell, what algorithmic differentiation is about. Uh, why is it a mystified uh, um, concept? I mean, over the years, it, ha it has become a very established technique, to be honest, in, in, in computational finance. However, not everybody uses it yet. So, so there are still a number of people who've been, or banks, institutions, um, who've been very much driven by this bump and reval paradigm. And, and uh, they have the, the infrastructure installed, so it's up and running. Uh, and, and for a very long time, so you, you could throw sort of hardware and, and then software infrastructure at the problem and solve it that way. However, uh, with, with uh, developments like XVA computations, FRTB and the like, the number of those sensitivities is growing to a level where sort of bump and reval is no longer really a feasible alternative. So a joint algorithmic differentiation is becoming essential. But the mystified pro uh, concept about that is that while, while sort of bumping and, and price and reval is sort of a forward kind of paradigm, you think, okay, you, you do for the sensitivity analysis, you, you go the same way as your original program. That is no longer true in an adjoint uh, uh, program. And in an adjoint program, you kind of have to go backwards. And that's the mystified part to some extent. I mean, it's, it's not when you think about it for a little while, but when you don't and just look at it and hear it, there is some sort of uh, mystified feelings potentially behind it. So in reality, it's actually quite straightforward. It is. In, in reality, it's quite straight reverse, to put that way, because you, you have to go backwards. But yes, I mean, as with many things, you know, once, once, you, once you've got your head around it and, and, uh, and understand what the principles are, it is not a complicated uh, concept at all. To make it work in a real world uh, situation is a, different, is a different story. So there are quite a few complications to be addressed, but, but conceptually, I would think it is rather straightforward. Uh, so how does AAD application change the game for financial institutions? Uh, well, again, so if I, if I, if I look back, uh, when, when, we, when we first started, when I came to quantitative finance quite a few years ago, the, the problems people were facing were uh, all in, a, in an equivalence class of, I don't know, tens to perhaps a hundred sensitivities required for whichever purpose really. Uh, that has changed with, with XVA and, and FRTB uh, uh, becoming sort of mainstream developments in, in quantitative finance. The number of those sensitivities is going up, up dramatically. So it, 
joint algorithmic differentiation has really become an essential part of the, of the whole story because you, you without it, you're, you're simply not capable of computing within a feasible amount of time and with feasible resources, uh, this kind of sensitivities you require to answer those questions. So I believe it is, uh, it, is a, it is a game changer in the sense that, number one, you can ask questions you were not able to ask before. And number two, you can also think about sort of mechanisms for, for regulations, for uh, uh, risk analysis, for example, which, uh, which go beyond what you, what you would be able to do if you put sort of internally this restriction to the number of sensitivities you're allowed to look at. That, that is gone and that changes the landscape quite a bit, I believe. Uh, so what is the future of AAD in quantitative finance? Um, it's, it's going to stay there, I believe. I think that the, the main challenges uh, um, um, behind AD and quantitative finance are similar to uh, essentially all the numerical software development in quantitative finance in the sense that you want to come up with, with sustained solutions in a, in a highly dynamic world, right? So, you, I mean, hardware changes, software changes, programming languages change, everything changes all the time. So it is extremely hard to to come up with a solution you write today, which is still going to be fit for uh, whatever you want to do tomorrow and the day after. Um, so, so, so the challenge, in, in my opinion, is going to be to abstract away as much as possible uh, from, from what you're currently looking at so that your, your abstract solution is still going to be uh, applicable and can be mapped to whichever infrastructure you're dealing with tomorrow and the day after. But in, that, is, that is sort of general wisdom to some extent. That is also true for many other numerical methods and, and, and software development tasks. So, so AAD in particular is not much different uh, in, 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 in this regard, in my opinion. Uwe Nerman from Aachen University, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much.